So if we go back to the example that we had before, what we can do is we can uh, open up the curves box by pressing this button here. And what we can do is we can we start with the RGB channel, and this is what I showed earlier. But also what I can do is if I want to change to a different color, I can select red and add a red tone, and I can select green and play with that channel, and I can select blue. But also what I can do is I can, if I want to reset the curves, I can just reset that. Or if I have a number of curves, I can just reset the curve that I'm working on. But what I can do is I can select the RGB channel, but then instead of selecting red, green, and blue, I can just select the red, and then I can just select the green, and the curves box has been designed to react very quickly so that I can just go in and I can select a channel very easily, and when they're very close, they're overlapping, you can see that the resolution is very good, and it, what I can do is I can just hover over the channel, and when it blinks, you can see, watch, it'll blink, that means it's selected, or if I go over here and it blinks, that means it's selected. So if I just move over it, it's going to keep the red channel selected, but if I hover over a channel, it'll select that. Or what I can do is I can right-click on it, and it will select it immediately. And so that's one of the things that's really been worked on in, in this curves box in Sage Light, because one of the problems I've always had traditionally was is that if I moved the red channel, and you know, then I wanted to move the green channel, I'd have to select the green channel, usually from a combo box, and so that would make it, make it even more difficult, and then I would lose my train of thought. So here I can just say, okay, here's green, and I want to add a little bit of red, and I can do that very quickly, and then I can say to myself, well, I want to add a little contrast, and then I can do that very quickly as well. And so you can see that I'm really able to change these curves very quickly, which really helps me keep kind of the creative flow going so that I don't have to come down here and worry about switching gears. So another thing I can do too, you know, the curves and saves are fairly high resolution. You know, there, there's basically, you know, you're dealing with 16 bits per channel, so you have a range of zero through 65,535 points, and every curve in Sage Light has uh, over a thousand points that you can you can set. So I can here's four points, the end points and the middle points that are set here, and I can do a thousand points if I want to. Of course, you would never have to do that, but sometimes you, you do want to be very subtle. So what you can do is you can drag the box out and make it bigger. Or what you can do is you can just press these buttons here, which set some, some natural sizes for it. And so if I wanted, for example, to set this size, then I can deal with the curves a little more specifically so that I can really if I really wanted to change this upper range here, I could really just work with that area and then shrink the box back down to its normal size or whatever size I prefer. Another thing I can do, depending on what I might want to do, for example, you can see that there's there's a lot of curves here. And then if I go into the power box, uh, power curves rather, you can see that uh, even one more curve comes up. And so if I have a lot of curves that I'm playing with at any given time, and like I said, once you get used to it, you really can use these curves very quickly. And so you can see that I have quite a few curves going here. And if I decide that maybe I don't want to deal with all these curves, what I can do is I can set these controls here so that I don't I don't need to look at the background curves. And so now I can just select these curves and work with the curve that I want to. Um, so if I want to look at a blue curve and not worry about the background curves because it's, it can seem overwhelming if I have all these curves showing, especially if they're a little more separated, it, uh, you, know, you can see what's going on. And you can also, what you can do is you can tell it not to select background curves. And so now, no matter what I do, it's only going to show the background curves, but I don't need to worry about accidentally selecting a curve. Also, what I can do is I can change the um, line size so that I can, if I really am trying to work with a curve, I can see with a little more detail what's going on, especially if, say if I want to turn off the background curves, I can really focus on what's going on with this, I accidentally turned on the masking. Um, so I can go ahead and, um, and do that. And, or I can have a thicker curve, so that if I want to see all the curves and I don't want to have to straighten my eyes or anything, I can have a thick curve too, uh, so that I can really see what's going on as I'm generating the curves. Now another thing that's been put into Save Light to make using curves easier, put this back to the default, um, is to 
basically what you can do is you can do different curve types. For example, you can set the curve so that it just draws, draws straight lines, which can be nice because sometimes when you're dealing with curves, you can see they, they uh, move all over the place. These curves are pretty much the same uh, curves that you'll see in other packages like a, a Adobe. And there, there's a reason for that. And so as you move the curve out, um, you can see that it really, you know, makes this elongated curve here. But then what I can do is if I really just want to see what's going on with my image and, and play with certain points to really just try to narrow down what I want to do and not worry about those curves, I, I can just set this mode so that I can play with it. And then what I can do, you don't necessarily want to leave it in this mode. These, these hard edges really can affect your uh, image. And so you can cl click this button and it will go ahead and, and move it. It'll, it'll generate a softer curve for it. But also what you can do is, you can see this isn't exactly a symmetrical thing going on when I, when I move this curve. So if I want to move this out and I just want kind of a mid-tone curve, you can see that what I really need to do is I need to set a couple points. And maybe even three points depending on what I'm doing. What's been put into Sage Light is the ability to have a softer curve. And so if you press the middle button, what it'll do is it'll set more of a symmetric tone which can be really useful, especially for things like saturation and uh, other elements where you want to have more of a symmetrical thing going on. And so you can see that it gets pretty easy to use. And so now if I move it back and forth, you can see that um, one of the things you want to be careful with in curves are, are these areas right here. You really don't want to max these out unless you want to do it on purpose. And so when it's a straight line like this, you, you want to be careful about that. And when you use the center, curve, you can see it's, it's a much softer curve. Now, the reason I said earlier that the curves were uh, like curves you might see in Adobe, for example, and that that was for a reason was because if you put curves pretty close together, they can get kind of crazy. And so when you do the regular curves, it prevents that. So now what I want to show are just a couple other things uh, that you can do with the curves. The power curves, for example, I'm, I'm going to do in another uh, video. And so let me reset those. But let me go back to the quick edit mode real quick. And uh, what I'll do is I'll show some of the options in the quick edit mode. You have these options here where it'll do auto levels, auto levels only, set gray point, and that sort of thing. And so what you can do is you can say auto levels and auto color. And you can see that it's adjusted the color and it's made it more neutral. And it's nice to do that here sometimes. It's really pretty much the same thing that the auto color is doing, except that now you have a little more control over it. So you can see it went a little blue, but what I can do is I can just bring the blue back now. As I said, it's pretty easy. And so, and I can add some red. And so you can see that if I do the unchanged, it really does look a little bit nicer. And then what I can do is I can uh, use the RGB to, to bring it down again. And for the same reason before that I said that you can use this to subtly adjust the results here, you can do the same thing. You can make an adjustment here and then use this to adjust the results too. So you can see that if I combine these together and that I've done this auto color and added some warmth to the image and also balance at the same time, it looks very nice. And so you, what you can also do here, let me reset everything, you can also use this set gray point, which is very similar to the... Um, this set uh, the set gray point function, but it's in the quick edit mode, so you can again alter the results. And so you can just click on the screen and you can keep the mouse down. And what you want to do is you want to find a point that is basically gray. Now the sky is probably a little bit blue, so it's going to go a little yellow. But you can move around and get to a basic point, and then again change. You press accept, and then you can change the results a little bit, and then. So if you don't like the auto balance result, you can have much more control over the result by setting the gray point. And what uh, the gray world does is it, it basically calculates the average of your image and sets the midpoints to that. And so this image already was pretty average. But you can see it changed it just a little bit to make it more neutral. And sometimes what happens is, is you get a more neutral image and it doesn't look right right away, but it sets you up for very subtle changes to to make an image that looks better and so you can see that I'm just really adjusting from the point that it's set for me and so that's the power of having um, a balanced image is especially one where you can do things like this where you can change the results is that it kind of puts you in a position to get the color that you want because it gives you that starting point.
So one last thing I want to show is the quick, uh, the Pro Quick Edit mode and how you can use the curves a little bit differently there. You have the same functions as before. Now it, it did an auto balance uh, for me automatically, but I'm going to skip that for now so I can show you what's going on with the curves here. Now you notice that there's some different modes in the Pro Quick Edit mode. So basically you have the same options here that you have in the um, uh, Quick Edit mode. But you can also go into the lab mode, and what you can do is you can uh, do essentially what we did with the uh, LCH mode and change the colors. Um, here you're, you're dealing with A and B channel, but what you can do is you can increase the saturation, and then you can deal with, with these um, channels separately. And so you can see that basically I got the same result that I got using with the power curves. And so that's that's an advantage of the Pro Quick Edit mode is that you can use the lab mode, which has definite advantages. And what you can also do is you can go into the HSL mode, and what you can do is you can do the same thing where I can deal with just the light if I want to, and then I can also deal with the saturation, but I can also deal with the hue where I can change the hue around to do really interesting effects, sometimes subtle. This one's obviously not very subtle, but what I can do is I can just really use these curves to change things around. Um, and so you can see I've really got an interesting effect going on here. And then if I want to, say, reset the this particular curve, I can go back to getting some of the same results that I was getting with, with the lab mode. That, you, know, you can get them in the RGB mode, they're just a little harder to use. And so if you're familiar with different color spaces, you can definitely use the color, the uh, the curves, the curves box, to do a lot of different things in the Pro Quick Edit mode. And you can also see that the uh, channels change as I as the uh, the mode changes. The curves don't change because sometimes modes are compatible, so you, you'll want to reset the curves uh, when you change modes sometimes. But basically. That is how the curves box work, or the curves windows, the curves window rather works inside of uh, Sage Light. And you can see that even though it's not necessarily the best for toning anymore, that it really does have a lot of uses that uh, make using Sage Light Editor even more powerful. So if you look at the before and after, for example, you can see that I'm really able to make quite a few changes with this image. So anyway, so that's the overview, and so hopefully you'll be using it in Sage Light.